Uh, my name is Mary Ann Lynn. I'm a resident of 148 Bears Run Drive. I've been a resident of Loveland for 19 years. And I too am going to read uh, my remarks so I don't forget anything. Last week I wrote a letter to the editor stating that I fear historic Loveland is at risk. It reflected my concern and my lack of confidence in Loveland leadership to bring to fruition development and improvement that adds or even supports the existing charm and appeal of our town. And I think the concern of the lack of confidence is widespread and drawing more and more residents to engage now before more misguided development takes place. The worry is based on physical evidence like Loveland Station or recent gateway signage that misses the mark and even more so in learning that there are no standards in place for future improvement. First, the city needs comprehensive branding. There are 20, if there are 20 roads leading into Loveland, there are at least 15 variations in the signs announcing one's arrival. From gateway signage such as this to city letterhead, police cars, or commercial business signage, there needs to be thoughtful, intentional, and consistent approach to our city's visual representation including the logo, colors, and font designation, just as a starting <clears throat> sorry, just as a starting point. Similarly, there are currently no architectural guidelines for building and renovation that are specific to Loveland's historic district. Loveland Station doesn't support our town's historic design. And if the new brownstone development across from Eads does happen to support it, it will be sheer luck. This is part, but only part, of what is generating pushback on the plan for new development on this site of City Hall. The city needs to pursue guidelines from the Ohio Historic Preservation Agency, as has been pursued by municipalities like Montgomery, Marymount, New Richmond, and Oxford, to ensure the preservation and integrity of our precious historic district. Right now, we are driving without a map, taking a ready, fire, aim approach to development. Understandably, it has people worried. Operating in this mode puts the city at risk of wasting money, like investing hundreds of thousands of dollars in a citywide wayfinding sign system that doesn't look like it belongs in the historic district. Even worse, we can end up with buildings that deter from the historic, from the historic small town environment we all love. If we build in haste, without thought, input, planning, and standards, we will suffer the consequences for a long, long time. And while the visual component of branding is very important, there is much more to branding than a look. Whether it's an individual, a company, or a community, branding is about your total identity, not just how you look, but what you do and what you say. I think of Loveland's identity as that of a small, charming little town on the Little Miami River, a town that prides itself on being welcoming and family friendly. And I've seen a lot in recent months that is contrary to that image. When it comes to the image of our city, how we treat farmers market vendors matters. How we treat the Chamber of Commerce matters. How we treat the Loveland Athletic Boosters trying to plan the homecoming parade matters. And how our city leadership treats the residents who want input and assurances that the city will do better moving forward, that definitely matters. In an email to me on Friday, Councilwoman Gross was adamant that there is no pending vote on the demolition or construction of City Hall, and also wrote, and I quote, I want the public engaged. I want public input. That is why I voted for the scheduling of a public hearing. There will be multiple. Sadly, three of my colleagues voted no, so the motion failed and no hearings are currently scheduled. Councilwoman Gross. You left out the part about Councilman Weisgerber's suggestion for a less formal exchange of ideas prior to public hearings. You failed to mention Weisgerber's formal motion to hold no less than three open dialogue sections to discuss City Hall and get open input from the public prior to formal hearings. You also didn't share that you, Mayor Fitzgerald, and Angie Sattel voted against Weisgerber's motion with Kathy Bailey, Ted Phelps, and Weisgerber voting for it. Deception by omission is still deception. And it isn't right to try and position yourself as the champion of input at this point. The rendering of the December newsletter didn't come out of nowhere. 
someone had the vision of a four-story building to generate that rendering. Mayor Fitzgerald has stated a July timeline for demolition at a recent CIC meeting. You can't pretend there weren't plans being made. And relative to moving right to public hearings, does that not open the door for council vote to transfer the property right to CIC? Once the property is transferred, doesn't the CIC assume all decision making? And the fact that you are the only council person who sits on the CIC only adds to the conspiracy theories. City Council needs to start informing the public about the vision plans and decisions before the fact, not after. And the public needs to see physical plans, drawings, and timelines to get on board. Given the recent MO of City Council, you can no longer expect Loveland residents to take a leap of faith that you will do the right thing or bring to fruition positive development in our historic downtown. Thank you. Perfect timing. Thank you very much. The next